Hello! One of my Kickstarter orders arrived earlier than expected. It's the all-in-one modular art box by a company named Crydroofy. I saw their Kickstarter campaign advertised on Facebook and I was so intrigued I went and had a look and of course I've ended up with one. So let's get into it! I'm just going to be unboxing this today because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it yet but I just wanted to have a look at it before I get started filling it with paints. But you can see that's the idea. So as the name says, it is a modular unit and all of these pieces should come apart and also clip back together again. There is a standard set and a slightly more expensive Ultra set. I ended up getting the Ultra because I figured if I'm paying for shipping I may as well get the biggest one. <laughs> This has come from Hong Kong and I'll link Cryjoofy in the description below because they are available on their website. The Kickstarter campaign has finished. These were meant to ship out in March but I got this at the end of January so that's pretty good. So first up is this box which I will come back to soon and then underneath is the modular unit with all sorts of bits and pieces in it. I was just going, um, what have I bought here? <laughs> But I'll pull everything out and then we'll take a closer look at it. It's definitely all stacked together here. Mine is blue and black. There is also a green and tan coloured set. Okay, I guess I'm getting into the box now. <laughs> Greatness comes from a small beginning. We believe in the power of details. So inside here are some accessories to put in the box. And first up are a couple of highly moisturising sponges. And those are for the wet palette module. There are some mixing papers for miniature paints like a disposable palette and then these other ones which are for every other paint. Acrylic, watercolour, gouache and oil. I'll show you where these papers go soon once I start getting into the modules. But they're really cute packets and they have miniature ones because apparently miniature paints dry a lot quicker than other paints or something like that. I'll get back to those once we pull this thing apart now. There are a whole bunch of these funny looking things which I later figured out are brush holders. There are four sets of these larger ones and then another four of these smaller ones here. I've worked out much later that the small ones go inside the water pot and the large ones go on the outside for air drying the brushes. I think the standard set has two of each and the ultra set has four each but they all unclipped easily. Next up are two large black containers which hold water or probably solvents as well but I think I would just use water in them. They also have rubber things down the bottom. These are so you can scrub your paint brushes on them as you're rinsing them out and mine has come with a couple of extra ones so there's four in total here. These all come out so you could just put the water in without one or put the rubber at the bottom to help clean the brush off which I think is what I'll be doing. I guess I could put the other two rubber ones in this blue container because that could also be used for water or to hold other art supplies like paint tubes, pencils, things like that, anything that you might want on the go. Because the set to me is something that I would probably travel with more than anything. And now we have these modules down the bottom which are clipped together. In the standard set there would be one of each, in the ultra set I have two of each. And here's the user manual, yay! <laughs> This is where I confirmed that those rubber things are indeed brush holders and then there's just some general hints and tips on how to use various things in the box and using different paints in the box like for storing acrylics and gouache etc. It also has a couple of pictures of how not to use the modular box and making sure everything's clipped together properly. A Kickstarter sticker, I'll have to put that somewhere and then some promotional codes at the bottom. So I'm pretty sure it's only a couple of people who have put these boxes together and I do like supporting smaller companies like this, especially when they come up with ingenious ideas. So let's take a look at all of these. I have two versatility mixing modules and this is where these little papers go into. So these fit perfectly onto the top of that tray there and also inside the tray. But down the bottom I also have two paint storage modules which have the blue lids there. So I'm just going to unclip everything to see how easy it is. And yeah, it's a little bit difficult to begin with just because the clips kind of get in the way of each other when you're trying to undo them all at the same time. Oh my gosh, I was getting so confused as to which ones were attached and which ones weren't. Yes, I have to unclip some more, Becky, before they'll come apart. So if you bought the standard set you would get one of the blue lidded boxes here and one of the other plain black boxes. I mean it really is probably enough just having one of each but I thought that I might want to put different kinds of paints in them that's why I decided to go for the larger one. 
This is the paint storage one and it's really strange. I was looking at it going, is it supposed to have more containers that go inside? Because you can see how there's like these black tabs sticking up inside the paint containers and I have no idea what those are for. As I was unboxing this, I hadn't realized that their website was up and so I'm looking at it going, am I missing pieces? But no, I did a bit of a scroll on my phone and it looks exactly as what I have here and you just blob the paints in there. It's just kind of a weird layout and I really don't know what those little tabs are for that stick up inside each of the little compartments. My husband Nick had a theory that you'd put the paint in there and then use the little tab to wipe off your brush so you can dip it in other ones and not contaminate the paint. Let me know in the comments if you know. It also really doesn't fit any half pans because I tried that. And I also grabbed out a full pen. It doesn't really go in there very well. So I probably would not put watercolors in this. I would only use it for maybe gouache, acrylics or oil paints. And blob the colors straight in from the tubes. Maybe you could put multiple colors in one compartment. I have a feeling it's just going to turn into a mess. But anyway, it has an airtight lid so you can keep your paints wet for up to 60 days, I think, for most of them. Now, going back to the mixing module, I'm just going to pull out one of these sponges and you can see how this works as a wet palette. So the sponge already is quite damp, but you do need to add water to it. It fits in there perfectly. It's such a good design, I have to say. And that sponge is lovely and thick. Next I'll open a packet of the 4-in-1 disposable palettes. These are for any paints except for the miniature paints. In case you're wondering, miniature paints are for those little tiny plastic figurines and tabletop gaming, that sort of thing. And I'll just struggle to pull out all of the papers here. One side has printing and that goes face down and then the paints go on top of the plain side here. So if you want a disposable palette for oil paints or something that doesn't require water, then you put it on the top part. Or if you want to have a wet palette, you would lay the paper over the top of the wet sponge and that will keep acrylic paints wet for ages. So the two little clips here will hold this paper down and I could not do this on camera. I had to use both hands here. But once I got the paper securely held in underneath the clips, it fits in just so nicely. And here's a mixing palette all ready to go with whatever paints you desire. Wet or dry, depending on what you want. So I just love that versatility. All of the modules and the accessories, like the papers, are actually sold separately as well. So you can buy extra things as you need them. So you could start off with the standard set and then purchase more stuff if you wanted it. But I just was greedy and bought everything at once. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in the standard set you get the same amount of papers though. I thought I would open the miniature papers too to see what the difference is. You could see it's a lot more shiny and it's more like baking paper, whereas the standard papers are a little more matte. I'll just demonstrate the paintbrush holder as well. So you can have your brushes facing up when they're dry and once they have been wet then it's a good idea to turn them upside down so that they can dry with the bristles down and liquid doesn't run into the ferrule and ruin the brush. But here are all of the things that came in the all-in-one modular art box ultra set and now I have to figure out how to put this whole thing back together again. Oh joy! <laughs> It was actually pretty easy and those clips went back together nicely. And what I like about it is the fact that you don't have to have all of the boxes together. I could just leave a couple of them off and have one of each if I wanted to with some spares. Or if I want to take two different kinds of paints then I've got that option too. So I really don't know what I'm doing with this yet but I just thought it was so cute and I had to have it. It was very much an impulse buy. But I also really like using wet palettes and so I thought this would be useful for me either to use in my art studio or to take it out in the field if I go traveling anywhere. It has cat hair on it already. <laughs> I do like the light blue color and all of the pieces feel nice and sturdy like you could carry this around and it can get banged around quite a lot without breaking. But even if something does get damaged while traveling, there is the option to buy spare parts and I think that is the best thing that they've done. So this is fully customizable and it has so much potential depending on what kind of paints you like to use. The blue part also has a carry handle and I realized that I'd put the pots in the wrong way because these have carry handles too and those need to go in the center so that you can put your fingers through and pick the whole thing up. The one thing I wish it did have, which it doesn't, 
is a removable shoulder strap. That would be so good if you could just kind of walk around with this hanging off your shoulder rather than having to carry the caddy in your hand. I'm thinking mainly for hiking purposes here. It would just be so much easier to have your hands free. But that's about the only criticism I have for the box that I can think of so far. I mean, obviously I haven't actually used it yet. And so that's going to be in a future video. I really just need time to plan out what I'm going to put in here because I have no idea. But I was too impatient to wait and I absolutely had to unbox this. I think it's really neat and I love all of these disposable palette papers as well and the fact that more can be purchased or you could probably cut your own pieces to size anyway. And yes, I was really struggling to get everything back in the box. I kept dropping things and the open packages weren't helping either. But while I'm struggling with this lot, I'd love to hear in the comments what you think of this modular box. Did I make a good purchase or was it a silly one? At this point in filming the video, I was thinking it was silly but just because I could not get anything back in this box. It was so frustrating. Ah! <laughs> But I was thinking I want to actually do some plain air painting outside in acrylics or oils and I thought this box would be really great because I don't have anything small to take out with me. Only a huge wooden easel that weighs a ton. So I think this will be so much more practical and I'm really excited to use it. Let me know in the comments what should I put in this because I would love to hear your suggestions. Yay, everything's finally back in the box and that deserves a happy dance, woohoo! And it took to this point to realize that those brush holders will go on the outside of the box and not in the cups where it's going to interfere with the water. These things are always so obvious in hindsight, aren't they? But I think this is going to be really great once I have assembled it to my liking. But thank you for watching this unboxing. I will film another video actually using it at some point filling with paints and doing some painting. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and you might want to click the subscribe button for future videos. I'll pop another couple of videos up here for you to watch now and I hope you're having a great day out there. I'll see you all in my next video. Swatch you later. Bye.